Hey guys, we're going to be talking about some. I'm a teacher, I'm also a preacher, so I try my best not to go into preach mode. I try to go into teach mode uh, because I want to educate you and I want to talk about some stuff. But have you guys heard about the old man and the new man? Have you guys heard about that? Did you guys know that Jesus didn't come to fix you? He came to kill you? Did you know that? Did you know that there was a part of you so bad that it couldn't be fixed? He couldn't add anything to it. He couldn't bring anything to you. He couldn't educate you. He couldn't train you. He couldn't edify you. He had to kill you. Because you can't add what it is that God wants to do to your life when you're in the old man. It's just impossible. You guys know the story of Moses, right? Couldn't go into the promised land. You guys know the story? Do you guys remember why he couldn't go into the promised land? Anybody know? He struck the rock. Right? He struck the rock, guys. Did you know that that rock represented the heart of God? Did you know that the law was trying to teach the people of God what the heart of God was? And by him bringing that rock and by them speaking to the rock every day, that that water would produce, that rock would produce water. It would spew water because it represented God's heart. But it also represented the people's heart because the people's heart was stony. And so when God told Moses to speak to the heart or speak to the rock, it was as though he was speaking to the heart of the people and it needed to be spoken to. And that was the day that Miriam had died. And that day when she died, she was the one that spoke to the rock every morning because she was the first prophet, she was the prophetess. And she would speak to that rock every morning and that rock would spew water. But on this morning, Miriam was dead, and there was no water. And Moses was mourning the loss of his sister. And they came to him, and they were complaining, we have no water, we have no water. And so he was mourning, and he was very upset. And so what he did is he ended up striking the rock. And this is why he couldn't come into the promised land. Because the, the teaching is that if a rock that doesn't need sustenance, a rock that doesn't think, a rock that doesn't talk, a rock that just sits there, if that rock can obey God's voice, how much more the children of God? Amen. And that's the teaching. If a rock can produce something just because God tells it to, why aren't we producing something when God is speaking to us about what it is that we need to be doing? Amen. That's a powerful reality when you think about a rock. There's nothing in there. But you know what it does have? It has the word of God. And when something has the word of God, it's going to produce. Even if it's asking for water. When there's no water there, it's the craziest reality, right? Do you guys remember Moses was put into the cliff of the rock? You guys remember that story? Do you, you want to know why they put him in the cliff of the rock? Because he asked God to show him his goodness. Do you guys remember that he put his hand on the eyes of Moses? And he walked by him and he gave him his back because he was showing him his goodness. He couldn't see his face, right? Because if he'd have seen his face, he would have died. But did you know by him putting him into the rock is a foreshadow of putting us into Christ? Did you know that? So when he said, show me your goodness, Moses didn't understand. And he stuck him in the cliff of the rock. And he said, this is my goodness. I'm going to place you in me. I'm going to be your rock. Right? And so when God walked by and he covered Moses' eyes and he seen his back, what's very interesting is you hear about the story of Jesus. And he showed up. And you know what's crazy? In the midst of everybody turning their backs on Jesus, he still gave them his goodness. You know what his goodness was? Does anybody know? It's the same thing that he gave Moses. What did God give Moses when he asked for his goodness? What did he show him? Showed him his back, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what Jesus did? He gave us his back. As they whipped him. He showed us his goodness. Amen. And they whipped him. And you know what he said? Forgive them. For they know not what they do. Which is very interesting. Because you know when Moses couldn't enter the promised land was because he struck the rock. Did you know all humanity struck the rock? And his name was Jesus. That's a crazy reality, right? 
So we're going to talk about something. That's a crazy thought when you think about that. Hey, did you guys know that it's against the law to see a naked man? Did you guys know that? Under Judaism, you can't see a naked man. It's really bad. Did you guys know that um, Passover, did you know that they cover the bread? I asked this question on Facebook the other day. Do you know why they cover the bread on Passover? They do that so they don't shame the bread. And you ask yourself, well, how can you shame the bread? What it does is it teaches us to cover one another and not shame each other because we're part of the body, right? Which is very interesting because Jesus went to the cross and the law says you can't see a naked man because it's his shame. So that means that everybody who was under the law, when Jesus went to the cross, they had to turn their backs on him because it was illegal to look at the, the naked body of Jesus, which tells us that if you're under the law, you cannot look at Jesus. You can't do it because it means you have to address your own shame. And as long as you have the law, you'll hide behind the law and you'll never get real with yourself. Amen. You never will. Amen. Right? Hey, do you guys remember in Genesis, there was uh, this man named Adam, and um, he was commanded by God not to eat from this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You guys know there was two trees in the garden, right? And the first tree was the tree of life. That was not a tree that gave life. It was life. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Did you know that this tree produced all life, the tree of life. It wasn't just some tree that was there and you looked at it and you pointed at it and you said, hey, that's the tree of life right there. That tree was connected to God's heart because it was God's heart. It was a tree that brought all sustenance. And then there was this other tree. It was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that tree was in the ground. You have to know this because we're spiritual beings. We're also trees. Did you guys know we're trees? Yeah. Did you know that we don't ever talk about that? Did you know that Jesus is the tree of life? Did you know that we're grafted into the tree? Right? Did you guys know that? Did you know that Adam and Eve had to leave the garden because they weren't supposed to eat from the tree of life? Because if they ate from the tree of life, they would have lived forever. But isn't, isn't it ironic that now as we're born again, we actually eat the tree of life? Did you guys know we eat the tree? Every communion, we eat the tree. Every time we eat the bread, we eat the tree. You know why we eat the tree? Because we're going to live forever. And we're not in a fallen state. So we get to eat from the tree, which is very interesting. Because that means that God sowed a immortal seed into a mortal body. Which means you have a seed inside you that's going to live forever. And i got to find out how to get you to the place where you can see that for yourself. It talks about that Jesus is the anchor to the soul. And it says that he goes behind the veil because he was the high priest that went behind the veil once and for all. So my job today, and I'm going to try and do this with all my, my strength in Christ through the Holy Ghost, is to bring you behind the veil. Do you know what it means to go behind the veil? That means that you get to go behind who you really are. You get to go deep inside of who you are in Christ. You get to get out of this flesh, out of this carnality. You get to go behind the veil where the presence of God is. You get to go behind the veil where the Holy Ghost trains you. You get to go behind the veil where the power of God and everything that he has for you is there for your use. Right? So I'm going to try and transition us if that's okay. Can we do that? Okay? Did you know I can't do that? Did you know I can't transition you there? Did you know the Holy Spirit has to do that? So there's this tree that they were commanded not to eat from. And God said that the day that you eat from the tree, he says you'll surely die. Does anybody know what death is in Scripture? Does anybody, does anybody, can anybody quote me a Scripture? Can anybody tell me what death is? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking death is a separation from God, right? Yeah. Right? That's what people will say. It means to be separated. Right? But that's not what it is. That's just the consequence of death. Does anybody know what death is? Anybody? No? The Bible says this. And this is what the scriptures say. This is the only scripture that says this. Of the entire Bible. 
the wages of sin is death, but that's what the outcome is. It doesn't tell you what it is. The wages of sin is death. Okay, so what's the wages? Right? Okay, so what's death? It doesn't tell you what it is. It just tells you you're going to experience death. It's like if I ask you to, hey, could you please explain to me what the color red is? Can you explain it to me? Blood? Okay, now watch this. What if you've never seen blood? Because remember, Adam and Eve never experienced death. They didn't know what it was. So if I'm asking you, explain to me what red is, and I've never seen it before, I can't explain it to you. Right? Okay, so here's what's interesting. The Bible says, to be carnally minded is... Okay, so what's death? What's death? It says to be carnally minded is death. So how did they die? They became carnally minded. The Bible says the carnal, the carnal mind is an enmity against God. It's not subject to the laws of God, neither can it be. That means that you have a carnal mind in there that needs to be renewed according to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which means you have a carnal mind in there. But the sad thing is that that carnal mind does not listen to God because it says that the carnal mind is an enmity against God. It's not subject to the laws of God, neither can it be, which means that when God talks to your mind, it does not listen. It doesn't listen to God. But that doesn't mean it doesn't listen to you. Right? St. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive into the obedience of Christ, which means that Christ cannot do that. The Holy Spirit cannot do that. God cannot do that. And you know why he can't do it? Because in the eyes of God and in the mindset of God, everything that you're battling is dead to him. It's dead. It's dead. The Bible says, consider yourself dead to sin. Which means that when that mind gets to talking, you're dead. Which means you're not going to listen to it. You don't exist when it's talking to you, right? So when he says, in the day that you eat, which means God knew that there would be a day that they would eat, or he wouldn't have said, in the day that you eat, you'll surely die. So then it says that they ate, and I just showed you that to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded, and you quoted this earlier, is life and peace, which means that Adam and Eve were walking around in the garden just thinking about spiritual things, thinking of God, thinking of his goodness, and that's why they had life and peace. Yeah. If you don't have life and peace, it's because you're in the carnal mind. Yeah. Right. Period. Amen. Right? right? Amen. If you feel like you're dying, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. If you're getting sick, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. If you're arguing, I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Right? I'm going to tell you why. Because yeah. you're at enmity. Yeah. And you know what? You're not even fighting God. You're fighting your identity. Yeah. You're fighting yourself. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> How do you gonna fight yourself? Man. You think you're fighting someone else. You're really fighting yourself. Man. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, do you guys remember this guy named Jacob? Yeah. He wrestled with God? Yeah. Hey, did you guys know that that's a physical wrestle? Yeah. <laughs> did you know who's the Word of God? Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. So who was Jacob wrestling with? He was wrestling with the word that God had given him. Amen. It becomes a physical wrestle. We had just talked about this earlier. The scriptures tell us that our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty of pulling down of strongholds, right? And then we just quoted a little while ago. We were talking, talking about that um, uh, every weapon formed against me shall not prosper. Did you guys know that it says every weapon formed? Did you know there's something being formed against you right now? Someone's forming something against you. A friend. Someone. Your job. Your boss. 
Somebody in their mind is forming some kind of attack towards you because they're in the flesh and they're trying to create enmity against you and your God just by the way that they're responding to you. Amen. Right? Yeah. And that weapon's forming right now. It's like a storm that begins to form. It gets cloudy and it gets bigger and bigger. And you start looking at problems. You're like, man, this problem is getting bigger and bigger. These issues are getting bigger. I don't know how I'm going to do this. That's a weapon that's forming against you. Amen. That's what that is. But it says that what? That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Come on. Right? Yeah. That's a crazy thought. So Adam, you know, it's it's mind-boggling to me, man. Because did you guys know that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, knowledge is not a bad thing because it's the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil, but we don't ever talk about the good part of that tree. We always talk about it as a bad thing, right? Did you guys know that the Bible says that Jesus, it says in, in Isaiah chapter um, 7, verse uh, 15, it says that butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Which means that Jesus was born without the knowledge of good and evil. And then it says in Luke um, chapter 252 that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with man and with God. And it also says that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Which means that Jesus had a mind in there that was battling who he was. Did you guys know in Matthew chapter 4, it says that after he was baptized, he was led into the spirit, into the desert to be tempted of the devil. Yeah, after 40 days, and after 40 days had gone, he got hungry and the tempter came to him. And the tempter said, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, <laughs> command this stone to be made bread. Hey, who's the stone, guys? Jesus. Who's the bread, guys? It's win-win for Jesus. Amen. See, but the enemy is attacking both sides of his identity. And he tells him, if you are, he's getting him to question who he is. Now, remember, just a couple of verses before he was baptized and God said, this is my son and who I'm well pleased. And so Jesus knows that he's being attacked. But did you know that the attack of the enemy is not a spiritual one? I'm going to tell you why. Because if it was a spiritual attack, you wouldn't have told him to eat. Because he was attacking the man part of Jesus, the hungry part of Jesus, the part of Jesus that was a man, because the Bible says he was fully man. And what was very interesting is that Jesus doesn't get into the spirit. Did you guys know that? Did you know that he didn't get into the spirit to fight the devil in Matthew chapter 4? Did you know he didn't call down angels? He didn't call on the Holy Ghost? He didn't call on anything. You know what he did? He used the word of God. And you know what? He beat him as a man. I'll prove it to you. Because the scripture that he used, he said, man shall not eat up. Man shall not eat from bread alone. Which means I'm not even going to get into the spirit. I'm going to beat you as a man. Right? I'm going to beat you as a man. Man shall not eat our bread alone. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then the devil took him somewhere. So I showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Did you know that? That was a crazy attack. And, and here, give us some thought. Hey, what did the devil look like in that, in, in that scenario? Do you guys know? What did he look like? Come on, go there with me. What did he look like? Did he have horns? No? What did he look like? Anybody? What did he look like? So what do you look like? Hey, remember the scripture says that he's a tempter. Right? And the Bible also says that, um, that they're going to cast the tempter, the one who deceived them into the lake of fire. So he comes to deceive you. Right? So what did the devil look like? What do you look like? Hey, watch this. Hey, do you guys get tempted? Yeah. yeah. What's the devil look like? What's he look like? Come on. You're being tempted. What's he look like? Huh? 
Right. See, we're too busy fighting this image in our minds that we're being deceived all day long and we're waiting for some guy to show up with a pitchfork when the whole time you're being tempted all day long getting in that carnal mind of yours. Yeah. Oh. The carnal mind's like, well, if you are a child of God, you should be blessed. Well, if you are a child of God, why ain't you healed? Well, if you are a child of God, why are you always mad? Uh, yeah. Did you guys know that that's the old man? Yeah. That's the old man, yeah. right? The Bible says that uh, put off the old man, put on the new. That's in, in, in Ephesians chapter 4, 22 to 26. We know that, right? Put off the old man. So anyways, he eats from this tree. What, it's very interesting because the knowledge of good and evil is not a bad thing. But did you know that God wanted to give it to Adam through a walk? Did you guys know that? Did you know that Adam in the Bible is called the son of God? Which means that if Adam is the son of God, he was calling God father. Do you guys know that? Yeah. So that means that God was his father and Adam was his son. And so is God going to teach Adam and Eve the knowledge of good and evil? Okay, so then why do we have it? Did Jesus have it? He learned it. Jesus learned the knowledge of good and evil. So maybe it's about learning the knowledge of good and evil through a walk with Christ. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe the serpent said, hey, I'll give you this knowledge. I'll give it to you my way. I'll give it to you without a walk. I'll just give it to you. And what did Eve do? She said she's seen the tree to make one wise. To make one wise. Okay, so did we assume that God wasn't going to train Adam and Eve? That God wasn't going to raise them as children? That wasn't going to give this, this, this knowledge? Did you guys know that after the fall? The Bible says this. The Bible says that God created man in his image and in his likeness. Did you know that the first time you find image is after they eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And God says, now they'll be like us, knowing good and evil. You know, I was always taught that Adam and Eve were already just like God before the fall. But if that was true, then why did he say after the fall, now they'll be like us, knowing good and evil? You guys ever thought about that? Because you can't be like God until you know what God knows. And you can't be a son. And the Bible says, the Bible says that a servant can go before a king. A servant. One who serves a king can go before a king any time. Did you guys know that? How much more a son can go before the king? I'm saying this for a reason, guys. I'm saying this because you have the knowledge of good and evil, and you have this thing called a carnal mind that's an enmity against God, and it's trying to corrupt the knowledge of good and evil every chance it gets. And the Holy Spirit is trying to train you. And did you know that the Holy Spirit doesn't train your mind? It doesn't train your mind. It says that Jesus offered up his soul as a sin offering. You know what that tells me? That tells me that Jesus had a soul. Did you guys know Jesus had a soul? Did you guys know that? Is it up there? Oh. Yeah, 5311. Did you guys know Jesus had a soul? Did you guys know that? Hey, do you know why he offered up his soul as a sin offering? Because that's what you are. A soul for a soul. Ain't that crazy? He offered up his soul. Because you're a soul. Did you know you're not a spirit? You're one with the spirit. But you are a soul. The Bible says that when he created Adam in, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. It says that he took the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils. And man became a living soul. So you're a soul. Did you know that the Holy Spirit trains the soul, doesn't train the mind? Did you know that? It can't train the mind if it's not renewed because he'll be training the old man. And the old man will just squander it. Did you know that? He'll get greedy. He'll kill. He'll destroy. He'll try and sell it. He'll do things with it. He'll, he'll defile it. And he won't give it to the dead man because he's dead. And you get a lot of people who walk out carnal Christianity. Did you guys know you can be pastored in your own man and not even know it? You can be showing up every day in the flesh, 
being trained carnally. And you wonder why most of us go in circles. We're frustrated. We're angry. We're wondering how come we can't hear God. And that ain't even you talking. That's a mindset talking. And you are not a mind. You're a soul. You're a soul. And here's what's crazy. Did you know that the soul, through Christ, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, says that those who are joined to the Lord, those are the souls. Those who are joined to the Lord become one spirit. So your soul becomes one spirit with Christ. Amen. So then when the Holy Spirit teaches you, Jesus said, hey, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's not going to speak of himself. He's going to speak to you about me and everything that I have. And you're like, why is that? Because your soul is one with me. And I want to teach you to walk like me and talk like me and be like me. But what will happen is if you don't understand this, your mind, the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Even Jesus said that a house divided cannot stand. He even said a kingdom divided cannot stand. Hey, where's the kingdom of God at? Within you. But if you're double-minded, you can't stand. That's why people can't stand you. <laughs> Double-minded in all your ways. Did God say? I prayed over that, but I don't know. God said, but, yeah, but, but, you know, and but, yeah, but. Only messes come out of butts. <laughs> So what's interesting is that the Holy Spirit is talking to you all the time. But if you're stuck in your head, you ain't going to hear him. If you're stuck in your head, you ain't going to hear him. The Bible says you obey from the heart. Did you obey from the heart? It says that God sends the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father. His spirit of his son. So you have the spirit of the Christ on the inside of you. And he's obedient. And he's trying to teach you to be obedient. And you know what's not obedient? The flesh is not obedient. The carnal mind is going to, you got an atheist living on the inside of your head. Talking about, you don't know what you're talking about. You got a serpent on the inside talking about, no, you're going to be good. Don't worry, we got this. Right? All day long. It's very interesting. Very interesting. So what happens is the Holy Spirit will begin to train you. But if you don't know the difference between who you are and who you're not, you're going to go in circles. You're going to be wandering for 40 years in the desert with the presence of God the whole time. <laughs> and you know these guys right they're the ones that say I don't even know if God's even like I'm a Christian but I can't even hear him God doesn't talk to me anymore you ever heard of these guys yeah. right no, no, nobody here but have you ever heard those guys that say you know I'm, I'm just I know God's real I'm born again but I don't know for some reason he doesn't talk to me that's a crazy thought right so then Adam, he eats this tree, and it says that there's this Hebrew word, the, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which God had created. That word subtle in Hebrew means a room. A room means subtle, but it's another word that also means naked or nude. So it means nude, and it means subtle. When Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God asked, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice walking in the cool of the day, right, in the garden. I heard your, your voice walking in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. Did you guys know he, he wasn't afraid because he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? That's not why he was afraid. He wasn't even afraid because he heard God's voice. You know why he was afraid? Because he was naked. He was naked, and that word was a room. He was a room, which means that at the fall, he put on the nature of the serpent. That's why the word's the same, a room. Subtle, a room, naked. 
Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember when they were in the desert, they were getting bit by snakes? Have you guys ever wondered why they were getting bit by snakes? Did you guys know that the curse is this? It's in Genesis chapter 3, 16, 17, and 18. You can start at 15. But he says, because you did this, you were cursed above any beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, eating dust all the days of your life. What's a serpent eat? What's a serpent eat? What's the serpent eat? Yes. I want to hear it. What's the serpent eat? Yes. What are you made out of? Yes. What are you made out of? Yes. What are you commanded not to live in? Yes. Why are you devouring everybody? Why are you being devoured? That's the curse. You're going to eat dust all the days of your life. You're going to consume each other. You're going to attack each other. Yeah. That's enmity. Yeah. The Bible says that you are by nature the children of wrath. By nature, you had wrath inside of you because of the fall. The Bible says that in Adam, we were all dead. We were all in Adam before we came to Christ. You guys know that? We were all in Adam. We were all dead. We were all carnal. We were all like our daddy, the devil. Yeah. Did you guys know that? Did you know that the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 says the serpent has a seed and that the woman has a seed? Do you know what a seed means? It means children. Did you know that we were the children of wrath? Did you guys know that when you give your life to Jesus, you get a new heart? That's in Ezekiel 36, 26. You don't just get a new heart. You know what else you get? You also get a new spirit. So you get a new heart, and you get a new spirit. So my question is, what was in the old heart? And what was the old spirit if you get a new one? Anybody know? <laughs> what spirit? There's only two. Hey, it says this. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus came in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus did not come in the flesh is not of God. Any miss, you know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. error. Okay? So here's what's crazy. So you're being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, which means that there was a seed inside of you that was not of God. Right? Yes. And there's only two spirits. And it's called the Antichrist spirit. You know what anti means? Not. So if it's the Antichrist, not Christ. So if it's not Christ, what other spirit is it? So Jesus was walking around, and he told Philip, you asked me to show you the Father. How long have I been with you? He tells him, hey, if you see me, you've seen the Father. So when you looked at Jesus, did you actually see God? Or was it because the Spirit of God was in him? What do you guys think? Yeah, because the seed was in him, right? Because he's the seed, right? He's, the, he's the, the Christ. The Christ means the anointed one. So Jesus the Christ, Jesus the man had the spirit of the Christ in him. Jesus Christ, <laughs> right? And what's your name? Rocky. Rocky the Christ. Not that he is the Christ, but he has the Christ in him. Rocky and the Christ, right? Pete and the Christ. So you have the Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Jesus the Christ because of what was in him. And that's what raised him from the dead. So when Jesus is walking around and he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, that means that when you see Jesus and you see him in the Spirit, you automatically say, oh, he's just like his Father because he has the Spirit of his Father inside of him. Could he say that? So that means before you gave your life to Jesus, you could say, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father. And who is your Father? Who is your Father before Jesus? Hence, children of the devil. <laughs> yes. So were you manifesting the devil or were you one? <laughs> See, the problem in the church is this. We get into the old man and we say people are, you know, demon possessed. No, you're just in the flesh. You're just in the flesh. 
you don't have a spirit in you, you're just in the flesh. Don't blame the spirit for where you're at. Don't blame the spirit for where you're at. Uh-uh. I'm not trying to cast the devil out of you. I'm trying to teach you not to be one. <laughs> right? And I got to give you a scripture for that. That's John chapter 6, verse 70. Haven't I chose 12 of you and one of you is the devil? How are you going to be is the devil? How do you cast the devil out of someone who is one? Amen. <laughs> right? Amen. Hey, so did you guys know that when you get into the old man, what you going to manifest? A devil. The Bible says cast out devils. Cast them out. They're assuming that when you're born again, you're not going to live in it. Yeah. Right? That's why the scriptures are given to us. Right? Romans chapter 8. Right? But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Right? So then Adam, he eats from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he hears God talking, he gets scared, and God says, Adam, where are you? He doesn't say, Adam, where are you? Because he doesn't know where Adam at. He's saying, Adam, where are you? Because Adam's not there. This is somebody else. Right? Adam, where are you? Hey, man, have you ever got into an argument with your wife? You're like, where are you right now? <laughs> where are you? Like, who are you? <laughs> right? Right? I got this dog, right? He's a, he's a, a, a Labradoodle. Could you imagine if I called my Labradoodle's name's buddy? I said, hey, buddy, come here. And he wouldn't come. And I went behind the couch, and he's shaking. And I said, what's going on? Why didn't you come? He said, because I heard your voice, and I was afraid, because I was naked. I'm like, dude, you've been naked the whole time. Who told you you were naked? <laughs> right? You get that? That's kind of what happened with God and Adam. What? Who told you that? And the scriptures say that their eyes were opened and they knew they were naked. That's what it says. But when God addresses Adam, he doesn't tell him, how did you know? He says, who told you you were naked? Did you notice that? Who told you? Who? Hey, you guys know who told Adam he was naked? You guys know? The Bible says that their eyes were opened. Mm -hmm. What eyes were opened? Were they walking around like with a cane through the garden? They were like, yeah. and then after they ate for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their eyes were opened now all of a sudden? Is that, was that, that the scenario? What was opened? Their eyes. Which eyes? The carnal eyes. Who told you you were naked? Because that's an identity that is not you. You are not the flesh. You are not carnal. You are a spirit being. And when you speak out of the flesh, God is like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Peter, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? <laughs> Peter, who do you say I am? Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist, which is even crazy because he just got his head cut off. And he said, flesh has not showed this to you. Flesh will never show that to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. So when God tells him, who told you you were naked? Do you guys remember that scripture that says that if God is for you, who can be against you? Did you know that's also a statement? Because if God is for you, who can be against you? And you know who the who is? The who is the flesh. The who is the old man. The who is the one that says you ain't going to make it. The who is the one that says you, you ain't who you say you are. The who is the one that's constantly contradicting who God is in your life. So if God is for you, you best believe who can be against you. He can if you listen to him. And the voice of a stranger you should not follow anyways, right? So... In Genesis chapter 3 at the fall, that's the awakening of the carnal mind. 
That's the shift. After they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were now talking from a different identity. They were talking from a carnal identity. They were talking from self. Hey, did you guys know you have eyes, but you're not supposed to see with your eyes? Yeah. Did you know when you're in Christ, you can't see with your eyes anymore? You have to see through your eyes now. You can't talk anymore. You can't speak with your mouth. Did you know you can't speak with your mouth? You have to speak through your mouth. Did you know when you hear, when you hear, you're not supposed to hear with this ear. You're supposed to hear from the Spirit of God. It's very interesting. Did you know that's a training that you can learn? You can learn to see through your eyes, not with your eyes, which means you have to have a covenant with your eyes, and you tell your eyes where to look and where not to look. Man, man. They don't tell you where to look. You tell them where to look. Amen. Right? Your emotions, your emotions don't tell you what to feel. You tell your emotions what to feel. Do you guys know that? Yes. This is what it's about when you're training in the spirit. You have to realize that those things are not you. Did you know that one of the fruit of the spirit is long suffering? Uh -oh. I don't want that one. <laughs> Why would God give you long suffering? Anybody know? It's long suffering. It's not little suffering. It's long suffering. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Which means that you're going to keep suffering until you learn not to be in the flesh. You are going to suffer. Until you get it right. Amen. Because in the kingdom of God, you don't get to fail. You just get to get up and do it again and again and again and again, right? It's like a Groundhog Day, right? You get to do it again and again, and, and you can't get out of it. You can't. You can't get out of it. There's no way out. There's just only way in. There's no way out. There's only a way in. That's it. In Christ. There's no way out. I tell you, there's no way out of this. You ain't getting out of it. You can't. You're supposed to go through it in Christ. So instead of trying to get out of it, you get into the Christ and watch what happens. Amen. Right? Yeah. That's the training, right? That's the training. So it's very interesting. So you have to find out how you became the old man before you came to Christ, right? Like how did it happen to you? Did you guys, there's this word, there's a Hebrew word, it's called Behor. Behor means the firstborn. Did you guys know that Adam was the firstborn? And did you know the firstborn gets the inheritance, the double portion from his father? Did you guys know that? Did you guys notice that the language in the Bible is about Father Abraham? Amen. Why Father Abraham? Because he's going to have children, the children of Abraham. But why Father Abraham? Because the blessings are to be handed down to his children. Because an inheritance is only handed down through your children. And we inherited sin at the fall. Because we were children of the devil. It was our inheritance. We inherited hell, death, and the grave. You were a child of wrath by nature. It was your inheritance. You were destined to go to the pit. Do you guys know that? So this is important because Jesus came and he has an inheritance from his father. Right? It's called eternal life. But you got to get that seed out of you. You got to get that seed out of you. There has to be a purging, a circumcision of the heart. Right? And that circumcision means that that spirit that was on the inside of you, you were one with that spirit. The soul was trapped. In that spirit. Did you know that? Did you know that your soul was purged from that? It was purged. It says in Hebrews, I think it's 4, um, 412. Thank you. Right, can you guys put it up there? For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing the of the soul and spirit. Why is it dividing soul and spirit? Why is it dividing soul from spirit? Because before you gave your life to Jesus, your soul was one with the spirit of error. 
And this is telling you what he did. Is he got the word of God, and he grabbed the hold of you, and he grabbed that knife, and he started cutting away everything that was not you. He cut away, look, when you read the word, that's what it does. It cuts away everything that's not you. It cuts away. That's why we get in the word. It's a sword. It cuts away at you. It cuts away everything that's not you. You get into it, it starts cutting, it starts getting in there. It's like it's, it's, like it's, it's getting a fish. You ever done the scales? It gets around that bone all the way in there. It bones that thing all the way down. And God pulls you out of that. And he says, that's the real you. That's the real you. I'm going to put you in my spirit. And then it says right here, then what? Joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and the intent of the heart. It's crazy. God knows who you are, man. And it's crazy because he purges you. He pulls you out of that spirit. And he places you into Christ. So then the key is, how do you train who you really are? Because who you really are is tapped into the Christ. Who you really are is on fire day and night. Who you really are doesn't have any lack. The Bible says that you're, you're, you're filled with all the fullness of God. That's in Ephesians chapter 3, 16, 17, 18. And you can talk about that. You'd be rooted and grounded in love. That you'd be filled with all the fullness of God. Can you imagine how empty you must have been if that place holds all of who God is? Think about how empty of a person you were before Christ came. That all of who he is fit in there. Okay, so now that you have all of that, now what? <laughs> now that you have all of that on the inside of you, now what? We're going to go in circles? We're going to get mad. We're going to get confused. We're going to argue about some stuff. What, what are we gonna do now? We gonna wish we get blessed? We gonna beg God? We gonna, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> do you guys remember Mary when she was pregnant? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. The angel told her she was pregnant, and she went to uh, Elizabeth's house. Yeah. Remember she was pregnant? Yeah. She woke up one morning, and the angel told her, "Hey, guess what, Mary?" I'm going to put something inside of you. Uh-huh. What? The Savior of the world. Huh? Yeah, but his spirit is going to be on the inside of you. And she's like, which spirit? Of the Messiah. But the Messiah is God's spirit. Wait, so you're going to put all of who God is in a man in my stomach? You're going to do that? Okay, wait. I remember in 2 Samuel chapter 6, they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David, and there was this guy named Uzzah who touched the box, and he died instantly. I remember when they kidnapped God, and they put him in the Hall of Gods, and these gods started falling face down, and there was boils and plagues. That is... Okay. When the sea was split, the Red Sea, when the plagues of eat, that spirit's on the inside of me? That's on the inside of me. That's on the inside of me. I'm going straight to Elizabeth's house. Why? Because they're high priests, and they know how to take care of the presence of God. And I'm scared. I'm scared of what I carry. This thing's an atomic bomb. If I do anything wrong, people are going to die. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but isn't that what's on the inside of you? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so yes, let me show it to you. Let me grab this box. <clears throat> This was me before I gave my life to Jesus. I was in the kingdom of darkness. This is my identity, right? Child of wrath, 
lost. I'm a part of the kingdom of destruction. I can only bring heaven here on earth because that's where my daddy is from. And you can only bring where your daddy's from. And so that's why when we're in Christ, we can bring heaven here on earth because our daddy's there and we can only bring the kingdom that we're a part of. And so Jesus taught us how to bring heaven here on earth because that's where our daddy's at and that's our, our destiny. And so we can only bring where we're from. So everyone who's not of Christ, they're unleashing where they're from by nature. They're not even trying to do it. So why is it so hard for us Christians just to by nature do the right things? If by nature the sinners, you can't even get mad at them because they're doing what they're supposed to do. Sin. <laughs> They're doing it right. At least they're not half, you know. Yeah. They're all the way in. Amen. Give them some credit. At least they're fully committed. Yeah, yeah. Right? We got Christians like this. Look. Uh -oh. One leg here, one leg there. Well, I don't know. I'm highly blessed. I'm highly favored. But I just got into an argument with my wife, so now I don't even know. I read and I fasted and I prayed and I was so blessed, but now something's not, oh, I didn't get that check. I thought it was God's will. I thought, and this is a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit talking out of here. God, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You said, what's going on? Why aren't you talking to me? <laughs> right? Here's one. God, help me. Okay. Get out of the flesh. There you go. We're done. See, but we want Jesus to come carry us out. Here you go. No. How can you rescue someone from themselves? You can't. I can't deliver you from the flesh. I don't care how many pastors lay hands on you. I don't know how many deliverance ministries you need to go see. They cannot deliver you out of your flesh. Amen. You got to get out. Yes. You got to get out. Look, you got out spiritually, but mentally you never did. You really walking around like this. <laughs> Looking at everybody and mama with a darkened eye. You got devil. You ain't going to get blessed. You suck. You stupid. I'm hardly blessed. Oh, wait, but wait, watch out now. Hey, were you guys a part of the kingdom of darkness? Yeah. yeah. Were you crawling on walls? You weren't crawling on walls? You were like making things move like you see in the movies? Because you're by nature a part of this kingdom. Well, what was your power then? Now all of a sudden you're a Christian, but you can't even stand straight. You're rolling around on the ground. I don't get it. I didn't see you rolling around on the ground when you were fully committed to the kingdom of darkness. Now you're rolling around on the ground. I don't get that. You weren't doing it when you were fully demonic, and now all of a sudden. <laughs> Do you guys see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a mindset, I'm telling you. Yeah. I was fully committed to the devil. Yeah. Fully committed. I hold back nothing. I was smoking crack. I was out there. I was talking to a guy, and I said, hey, man. They asked me, Do you believe in monsters? I said, Monsters are real. <laughs> but they don't roll around on the ground when you try to cast them out, they'll put a bullet in your head. Those are the monsters I used to run with. They were real. They were going to let you put their hand on them. They're going to run around on the ground. These guys will shoot you in the face. Right? These guys are real monsters. They're fully committed to the kingdom of darkness. And they'll tell you who they are. Right? They'll tell you that stuff. So they're fully committed. Fully committed to the kingdom of darkness. Which is very interesting. That's why when people who are fully committed to the kingdom of darkness, when they get saved, they're radical on this side. They're like, oh, shoot. I almost lost my life over a dirty look over there. Right? right? Have you ever done that? You know what I'm talking about. You go to the store and you get over a fight and people mad dogging you and they got guns. And you're like, whoa, 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 you're risking your life over that. But over here you go to a church, somebody gives you a dirty look, I ain't coming back. I quit. I quit. I ain't coming back. I quit. I quit. I quit. Really, dude, you're about to lose your life, man, over a dirty look. I'm being dead serious. There was a guy named one Eye Willie, man. He lost his eye in the fight in Great Bend, Kansas. He lost his eye in the fight. He used to get beat up every Friday at the bar. And I invited him to church. 
I said, you coming back tomorrow? We're going to have a barbecue. He said, nah. I said, why not? He said, they gave me a dirty look. I said, dude, you lost your eye at a bar fight. And you're going to be there Friday. And they're going to give you your licks. And you're going to keep going. But the minute somebody gives you a dirty look at church. Come on, man. <laughs> the carnal mind is an enmity against God. is not subject to the laws of God. Neither can it be. Hey. You know, <laughs> when you're in this box, you're in the flesh. Yes. Seriously, right here. Yes. You're in the flesh. So here's what we do. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little something that's in this bag, right? But here's what we do. We come to church in the flesh, right? And you walk in, right? And you're like, I'm going to meet God today. <laughs> no, you ain't. You're going to be in the flesh. You're going to go through the motions. You're going to be like this, talking about, I'm just going to do this because I don't want to look crazy. How long am I going to do this? Just, just sing along. Oh, you're in the flesh like, dang, this song sucks. Oh, this song's loud. Oh, oh, here's the other one. Here, here, here's my favorite one. Watch this. Come into church. The mind's like, man, I want to raise, the spirit's like, I want to raise my hand. The flesh is like, you're going to look stupid. Man, I want to really raise my hands right now and praise God. Yeah. No, you don't. Man, I just want to praise God right now. I want to yell out hallelujah, but you're going to be stupid. Oh, man, I just, I'm, hold on, hold on. All right, I'm going to raise my hand right here. <laughs> this is it. Right? Right here. Right? 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 And then you got someone over here all doing this. And then you like, damn fool. <laughs> Don't just, do, not me. Uh -uh. Right? Right? Or here's one. Everything in you saying, go to the altar right now. And here's what you say. If it plays this song, I know it's from God. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Right? <laughs> right? I'm about to disarm all of you. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I'm about to, I'm about to disarm all of you in the flesh. You guys going to come next Saturday. You're going to be singing and dancing, jumping around. You know why? Because if the flesh can make you do this here, what's it doing in your house? If in the house of God you can't raise your hands, what makes you think you're going to say something to your wife when it's time to say what God wants you to say to her? Amen. Right? How about when you're out there on the streets and someone needs prayer, but right here you couldn't even get on your face? Yeah, man. Your vessel couldn't even honor God here. You think it's going to honor God out there? Amen. You couldn't even dance in, in the presence of God. How are you going to even act like God's in your house? Amen. Come on, I'm being serious. I tell my wife this all the time. She says, why are you going to pray for everybody? I say, I don't do that for you. I do that because my flesh needs to know. It ain't running nothing. Amen. I carry the presence of the living God. I'm carrying it. It's a responsibility to carry this thing. It ain't the other way around. My flesh ain't lugging me around like some ox. I ain't, it ain't having me around looking at everything and doing things I shouldn't be doing and over here quite like, no, heck no. Yeah, come on. No. Jesus. And what's really sad is when you get to praying in here. <laughs> Give me that raise, Lord. Give me that new car. Oh, bless me. Oh, come on. Ugh. Oh, man. I wish my wife was here to hear that message. That was for her. <laughs> right? I'm not even joking. That's the flesh all day long. You think it's you? It ain't even you. It's the carnal mind that's the enmity against God. And... Let me show you something. So I was at the airport. I got this weapons bag. Right? And when I travel, I, I travel with this, and I go to the airport, and they say, hey, what do you got in the bag? You got a weapon? And I'm like, yeah. 
I got a weapon. They're like, what kind of weapon is it? It's a weapon of mass destruction, right? They're like, really? Yeah. This thing murders and kills. Amen. This thing, this weapon is responsible for every murder. Oh, man. It's been responsible for every divorce. Yeah. It's been responsible for every calamity that's ever happened. Yeah. Right? It has to stay in this bag. The guy's like, is it a gremlin? What is it? Oh, I said, no. Like, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. His name's Pepper. Yeah, right? Look, he got no power. Look, he's disarmed. He got no power. He dead. He got no power. Look at him. He got no power. Look at him. When you give your life to Jesus, he stays in the box. He can't come with you. Moses couldn't enter the promised land. Your old man can't enter the promised land. Your old man's dead. Your old man can't go where you're going. God doesn't want you to carry this dead weight. You can't go any further till you get rid of him. Amen. You're going to keep going in circles till you get rid of him. He's already dead. He ain't playing dead. He is dead. Amen. You're playing dead. Yes. He's already dead. Jesus. God already knows he's dead. Jesus. Jesus came fully man to make sure he nailed that to the tree. Yes. Yeah. He nailed that to the tree. The Bible says that he in the enmity in one body. He ended the enmity, the enmity between the flesh and the spirit. He ended it. How did he do it? He came fully man. He came fully man to nail that identity to the tree. He came as you so you could become as he is. So he became fully man, and he nailed it to the tree. And the Bible says that he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. How do you spoil the powers? How do you spoil principalities by being nailed to the tree? How do you do that? You guys ever thought about that? Spoil means to take everything, to conquer. Did you know that Jesus conquered the flesh all the way to the cross? He didn't listen to it. He didn't live in it. And he was teaching you for three years how not to listen to it. How to use it as an instrument of righteousness. How to use it to carry the presence of God. How to use it. How to use it. And he did it himself. He taught you how to do it. He said, not my will be done, that's the will of the flesh, but your will be done, the will of God. Jesus struggled with those two wills, but he would not listen to the flesh. He wouldn't do it. In fact, before, he was, before, before Pilate, he didn't even say a word. He stayed quiet. Why? Because I'm not here to defend myself. Man. I'm here to teach you how to die to yourself. If I had told Pilate who I was, he would have let me go. He asked me five times who I was. I could have told him at any time who I was. He wanted to let me go. But I didn't come so I could be let go. I came so I could die in the flesh so you could go. So you could go free. So you could walk in newness of life. Did you guys know that Leviticus 17.11 says that the life of the flesh is in the blood? The Bible says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It says in Hebrews 2.14 that the children were partakers of flesh and blood. And Jesus likewise partook of the same. That through death he would destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil. How by Jesus dying does he destroy the devil? How does he do that? Because when you die in the flesh, you destroy everything that the power had legal right to. Everything. He had legal right to your mind, to your flesh, to all of that. He has no legal right anymore because Jesus nailed it to the tree. And not only did he put it on a tree, he put it in a hole. And not only did he put it in a hole, the Bible says he went to hell. Amen. Which means that he went there because that's where you were headed. Which means this, that when you give your life to Jesus, that identity, the old man who you thought you were, the real person, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 6, it says that the body of sin might be destroyed. Did you know that you don't have a body of sin anymore? 
It was destroyed. What you have now is the body of Christ. Jesus is not the head of the body of sin. He can't be. He's the body of Christ. But that doesn't mean you can't get into sin. It just means you got to get into Christ. Yeah, See the difference? Yeah. So what are you saying, Pete? You can't sin? Yes, you get into the flesh. You're going to sin all day long. That's my point. Don't get in the flesh. Yeah. And it ain't going to be you sinning. You're just going to be agreeing with it, which is even worse. Because yeah. the Bible says for a man to do right and does it not, it is sin. Yeah. So just you agreeing with, hey, I'm just going to get in the flesh. Just that sin. Because you know you shouldn't. You know you shouldn't. That's it. Come on. Come on. That's a crazy thought. That's it. You know you shouldn't get in the flesh. You messed up the minute you decided to. You can't do it. You can't. And you were given the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that for them who believed, Jesus gave them the power to become. The sons of God. See, the sons of God are different than the Christians. Because the sons of God have power. And the power is to become something. We become like Christ. Right? So here's what happens. Let me share a little scenario. So Rocky, are you married, Rocky? Yes, sir. Is this your wife? What's your wife's name? Stacy. Stacy. So Rocky, he was working 14 hours. He tired. Uh -oh. Right? And he gave his life to Jesus. He knows who he is. And he can't wait to get home because uh -oh. there's a football game coming on. And all he could think about is when I get home, I'm going to sit on that couch, I'm going to get that iced tea, and I'm going to watch the game. But your name's Lisa, right? Stacy. Stacy. So Stacy, she's at home, and she got a gang of kids. And she cooking and cleaning, right? And she tired and her back hurts and her feet hurts. And all she could think about it, man, when Rocky gets home, oh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to turn on the water in that hot tub. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to enjoy myself. Oh. <laughs> Did you guys know that that's kind of how we see life? We want everything to work out just right, right? But then Rocky shows up and he's like, whoo! Man, it's awesome. Hey, I'm going to sit over here, honey. I'm going to sit over here on the couch. I'm going to sit down and, uh, yeah, just go ahead and bring me a meal and bring me some iced tea, man. I'm going to watch this game, man. Just, sit, uh, just bring it to me. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> what was your name again? Stacy. So Stacy's over here. Oh, hell no. What the hell? Who does he think he is? You better tell him. You better get off his butt. See, but she doesn't know the difference between who she is and who she isn't. Hey, uh-uh. I've been cooking and cleaning all day long. I've been doing, you didn't even come over here. You didn't even kiss me. You didn't even say hi. You didn't. So she's just going off. And Rocky's over here watching the show. He getting yelled at. You gonna let her talk to you like that? <laughs> you gonna let her talk to you like that in front of the kids? The Bible says you the man in the house. <laughs> you better tell her she better shut up or else. <laughs> But Rocky doesn't know the difference between the carnal mind and who he is. So what's he do? Hey, you need to shut up. I don't want to hear it. I'm watching this game. I've been working all day long. My feet hurt. My back hurts. Come on, man. I, I, I pay all the bills. I do it. Like, you, you need to clean the house. What the heck? Right? Oh, it's like this. It's like this. This was going on in the inside. But now it's this. You better shut up. You better run, run, run. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. And she knows when to hit him. Because she knows all his shortcomings. But it ain't him attacking him, is it? No. It's the flesh. It's the old man. 
It's carnality. It's all the things. It's death. What? To be carnally minded is death. So guess what? You about to get killed right now, <laughs> verbally and emotionally. I'm about to dis I'm about to cut at you. Did you know that that's a knife? Yeah. Did you know the Bible says that the word of God is a double-edged sword? So if the word of God is a sword, then that means that the mouth and the words of the enemy is a sword too. Which means that it'll cut you down. We know that because when David killed Goliath, he used Goliath's sword to cut off his head. The rock wasn't what killed Goliath. It was the sword that killed Goliath. Which means that you can use the words of the enemy against the enemy. That's the sword. You use its own words against them. And that's what the enemy does. Did God say? Did God say? He uses God's word against you. That's what he does. And if you don't know your word, you're going to get cut every time. Every time. And it's trying to cut away everything that's Christ. And so he's getting chopped over here. He's getting hit everywhere. You fat. You dumb. You didn't graduate. Your mom didn't like you. Your friends left. You ain't got that. You ain't, man, the enemy knows where to hit him. Right? And he gets sad. Because it hurts. So then he's like. He's like. Get her. Get her. Get her. And now he's hitting low. Everything that knows hurts. And she's crying. And then they'll go to the pastor talking about, hey, man, we need, we need, we need deliverance. Amen. <laughs> hey, man, there's a spirit in our house. Hey, his name's Pepper, man. I call him Pepper. Look. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper. Did you know that you could be a pepper too? Because <laughs> by nature, he sneezes, man. That's why I call him pepper. He makes a mess everywhere he goes. Right? Before you gave your life to Jesus, you were pepper. It's what you were. This was you. Put off the old man. Put on the new. Right? And here's where it gets crazy, right? There was a, there was a, a tower a cover or something. Nah, nah, ghost pepper. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I ain't even playing. Hey, kids aren't afraid of the dark. They're afraid of what they believe in the dark. Hey, Christians aren't afraid of devils and demons. They're afraid of what they think they are. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Hey, how many Christians does it take to change a light bulb? It takes one. Because everybody else is praying against the darkness. Uh, <laughs> right? So here's what happens. They had this issue in their home. And Rocky, he, he don't know what to do. He prays, he fasts, he's doing it all in the flesh. He's doing it all in the home, man. He don't know what to do. He, he'd be left alone. He loses his mind. He needs to be delivered. So he goes to old so-and-so and gets six dudes. And they said, tell me what's going on in your house. Well, we get angry. We get upset. We're fighting. And there's this uneasiness in the house. And we, we've tried everything. We go to church. We pray. We're doing it all in the flesh. Right? We don't know what it is. It's manifesting everywhere. How do you know? Man, hey, ain't it crazy how... We hear Christians speaking in another voice, and we, it's a devil. But when we hear Christians talking like normal carnal, Christ, or carnal people, we don't say that's the devil talking. Yeah. And so here's what's crazy. So we'll go, and we'll have six people lay hands on Rocky because he's feeling depressed. But depression is when you're looking at yourself, and you're looking at the carnal things of this world. And the Bible says to be, to be carnally minded is death. And it also says this type of wisdom is not from above. It's earthly. It's sensual and demonic, which means if you're thinking earthly, you're thinking demonic. So if you're thinking about all the things that this world is putting on you, you're going to be demonic. Yeah. Amen. As a man believes, so he is. So if he believes, 
There's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with them. Amen. Right? Amen. So, is Rocky fighting possession or is he fighting deception? Deception. Right? So now, he needs this thing to go. So we got other Christians who don't know who they are that have the same issues. And they look at Rocky and they say, we need to get that out of them. Uh, Let's get it out of them right now. And they all lay hands on them. Come out, Rocky. Come out. Come out, spirit of infirmity. Come out, spirit of depression. Come out. I'm free. I'm free. The spirit of depression is gone. It's gone. It just left. It just came out. You see it? It just manifested. It's gone, for real. It's totally gone. Then he goes home. His wife says, hey, did that spirit leave? Yeah, I'm, I've been delivered. And then three days later, it's another spirit. Spirit of anger. Oh, my gosh. How many spirits are there? <laughs> my name's Legion, for we're many. <laughs> We are many. <laughs> we can be whatever you want us to be, because I'm a liar. Come on. I will tell you what, what I am, and it won't be the truth, because I'm a messenger, which means I have a message, and it isn't from God. It's a message to lie to you. Is he a liar? Yes. Is he going to be honest? No. He's an honest thief, right? Yeah. Right? It's crazy. crazy. So now watch this. So me as a minister, the Bible says, uh, finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Right? Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Right? We wrestle. You know what wrestle means? It doesn't mean you're fighting. It means you're wrestling. There's a big difference. And you're wrestling with the Word of God. You're wrestling to what God has said. That's the wrestle. And as long as you don't submit to what God said, you're going to be wrestling with that guy the rest of your life. The wrestle is let God win. <laughs> Let God win. Amen. Why are you wrestling with God? Let him win already. I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. I'm going to bless you, but your name ain't going to be Jacob. It's going to be Israel. And Israel means the man who wrestled with God and man and prevailed. So you can't wrestle as Rocky. You have to wrestle as the man in Christ. Because now you're wrestling to stand. That's what it's all about. Right? So now that you know who Pepper is, you guys won't come to church in Pepper anymore. Uh, you put a sign on that door that says, no flesh shall enter here. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Put a sign on the door, no flesh shall enter here. And when you come in and you get all up in the flesh, hey, did you read the sign? It says no flesh should enter here. Maybe you should walk back out there and come back in. Right? Right? So how does God train you? He doesn't train that guy. Right? And once you put him off, everything else just flows. Cool? You guys learn anything today? Yeah. Yeah. It's pepper, man. Yeah. Right? When people ask stupid, that's pepper right there. That's pepper. That's a pepper steak right there. That's pepper. Uh-uh. That's pepper. Mm -mm. No, that's pepper. Don't get into pepper. Get into Christ. Right? 